Hey, this is Andrew Brown and welcome Terraformers to another video. This time we're focusing on trying to get better assets. Whoops, did not mean to move that. To get better assets in our um, our upload because when we are building our website, it's not gonna just be an index.html page. We're probably gonna wanna upload things like images, JavaScript, style sheets, whatever, to make our Terra house look really good in Terra towns. Um, so the idea here is that I want to um, have some embedded images. Maybe I need to kind of think about what it is that I want to make as a page. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and um, I guess make a new new issue here. And we want a way of uploading assets. So assets upload, okay. And there are a few challenges here. We want to uh, use a for each to upload assets. Okay, I think that's really the main thing is teaching you about uh, for each. It'd be nice to explore different um, data structures in Terraform. In practicality, you don't need to do a lot of this, but when you get into larger projects, it happens a lot more. But what we'll do is go ahead and submit that as it, well, we'll look at Terraform console a bit more. Terraform console, we never really had a good opportunity to use that earlier, so we'll go mark that. I'm gonna go ahead and create this development branch. Great. Okay, and um, we'll go back over here to our code. I'm going to drop this down and we're gonna go over to assets upload. We'll go to get pod here. And we'll let it launch here. Now, we were supposed to be creating a page that's going to go into a hub. I still, I know what I wanna make for some, but right now I'm just keeping it simple and um, uh, you know, I think between week one and week two, I'll start building up my pages and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But right now, what I want to do is just get any kind of image in here. So, um, I know I want to do something with, um, Arcanum because that's a very old school game. That's really fun. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an image from Arcanum. So I'm just going to grab this for now. That's what I want to talk about. I'm just putting this on my desktop here and looking at the file format. Hopefully it's a JPEG. It is. So I'm just going to say R, Canum, box art. You can do whatever you want here. All right. But I'm going to drag this over to public. So that is now in there. I'm going to go over here and I want to include this image. So I'm going to say image source. Um, I guess the way we'd have to reference it locally would be our Canum box art like that. I'm going to just put a forward slash. So that way it's going to just resolve to that area. Actually, I wanna put in an assets directory so things are a little bit more organized. I'm gonna keep my assets directory nice and flat just so I don't have to deal with subfolders. Okay, so there is one image. I'm gonna grab another one. Um, here's another one that is a screenshot of the game. So I'm gonna just drag that to my desktop here. Screenshot. And I'm going to just drag that into my assets as well. So now I have two images, one's a JPEG, one's a PNG, which is totally fine. I'm gonna go and now say PNG, okay? So we have two images in here. Um, I might want to preview this locally. To do that, we would need something like um, uh, HTTP server is probably the easiest way to do that. So I'm just type this in here. HTTP server is a very fast and easy way to, I love the logo of this thing, but a fast and easy way to have a web server that will be served up. The easiest way is to install it this way. I'm gonna add it to our Gitpod YAML. So I'm gonna go down here and say name, uh, HTTP server. I'm gonna paste this in as a single line. We'll say allow, it literally is one line to install. And it pasted it in the wrong spot and it got rid of most of my code there, of course. Paste that in there. If you're wondering what this um, pipe does here, it treats each of these as new lines, which is what you want it to do. That is not specific to Gitpod, that is specific to YAML templates. But this is what I want to install. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna make a new tab. And I don't want this here. Okay, and I'm gonna hit enter. And that should install this tool. So the way it works is you just type in HTTP server. It by default serves up the public directory. So that's why I called it public. And um, we could probably just do this, say command, 
and then do HTTP server here. Okay, let's see if this works. There we go, so it should be serving this up. If we go over to ports, I'm gonna make this port public. We'll click on that, and so this is my website. It's not showing all of Arcanum. Um, I'm going to just change the name here. So, uh, you know, reasons, we'll just say reasons why why you should play Arcanum instead of Starfield. Because Starfield's very popular as a game right now. And so I thought that might be there. I probably will just change this to like tips on getting started with Arcanum. Yeah, I'll change that. So we'll just say um, how to get started playing Arcanum. It's a very, very old game, but it's, I like it. Anyway, we'll go back here, give us a refresh. So our other one's not showing up here because we repeated it twice. The other one's not a PNG, or the, um, sorry, the first one's not PNG. So I was gonna say screenshot here, and we'll go back here. And so I should, <laughs> it's not really doing what I want. Screen, why is it not showing? I'll copy the link here, copy, rename. So I'm gonna copy that name there, paste it in. Oh, this one doesn't have an end on it, that's why. Okay, great, we'll go back here, refresh. There we go, so I have two images, not the nicest page yet. We're just getting started. I'm not sure why there's a hello in there, it's just up there at the top, take that out. So I have a page and I have a couple of assets. Now, how would we get those there? How would we use Terraform with that? Now again, you probably wouldn't wanna use Terraform for managing assets of, of files and stuff like this, but we're going to, because it gives me the opportunity to use more complex functionality at the beginner level. So let's go over to our modules into our storage. And you'll notice here, uh, we used this before, right? So this is for uploading a single file, but what happens when we have multiple files? Well, um, one of the most powerful things about Terraform is that it can do iter iterative things. And generally other declarative um, IEC tools cannot. So like CloudFormation traditionally could not do that. I think they have a feature that you can do it now but other ones generally are not able to do so. And because that's like something you get in a programming language. So this is something that's in between a full blown programming language or and a simple scripting language. And that is one of the powers of Terraform. Let's go take a look at for each, for each. Now I actually did try to ask it in ChatGPT on how to do this and it really made a mess of things. So if we go over here and we say, um, uh, I have an S3 folder or I have a folder, or I want to upload S3 or files, a folder of files to S3, a folder, sorry, a folder called assets, full of files to S3 using Terraform, okay? And so it should try to produce a for each for us, but it might make a mess of things. And it probably will use the older S3, AWS S3 bucket object, which is not what we want to use, even though the APIs are very similar to it, the syntax is similar. But let's take a look at what it tries to do. Okay. And so it did a for each. Um, actually, that looks pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it looks better than before. I'm not sure if that would actually work, um, would it? I'm not sure. So I remember, anyway, I just wanna show you off screen here or over here. It was producing crazy stuff and I was going into crazy loops and trying to convert uh, type to type. Um, and so I did end up with a simpler solution and we'll take a look at that right now. But what I really wanna do in this video is try to play around with uh, Terraform console a bit. Um, so we have this assets directory here, and I want you to go over to Terraform console. So we'll type in, let's just zoom in here, Terraform console, or we'll do TF console, that's easier. TF console, console here, and oh, we have to do Terraform init first before we can do that. Give it a moment. T 
TF console. And let's take a look at some of the functionality that we'd like to do. So the first one is I want to get a list of um, all the files in here in this folder. And if we go over to Terraform uh, function, so we'll say Terraform, we'll go to the documentation here, uh, configuration language maybe, mm, functions, file functions, file set. So file set enumerates a set of regular file names given a path and pattern. The path is automatically removed from the resulting set of files and any results still contain a path separator separators always returns to a forward slash. So this can be used to list out a bunch of files, which is something we want to do. So if we go here, I can, I'm can. i in Terraform console. You can see by that um, closed angled bracket, we're gonna type in file set. Uh, well, first, before we do that, let's figure out where we are. So we type in module.path, what do we get? Uh, Path.root. Great, and so I'm gonna say file set, and I'm gonna make this a string. I'm gonna do interpolation, okay? And we want to go into public assets, right? And then I'm going to close this out like this, and we'll see if it lists it out. It says I made a mistake. Maybe I typed it wrong, I have set twice. We'll hit enter. Still not right, I forgot the E. It expects two arguments. So what is the second argument that it wants? It says here, path and then pattern. Path and then pattern. So what is the path we're looking at? What is the pattern we're matching against? So here, I just wanna match against all files. So if I do this, we can use asterisk and that should grab all files. So there I get JPG and PNG. Now there might be files in here that we don't wanna copy. So we might wanna be a little bit more explicit in terms of what it is that we want to copy. Matches any sequence of non-operating characters, matches any sequence of characters, including separators, uh, matches the sequence of characters, matches any single non-separator, et cetera, et cetera. So let's scroll down here. And I think I want this one, matches the sequence of characters if one of the comma separated alternatives match. And I think that's what I wanna do here. So what I'm going to do, we can get a little fancy, is we're gonna hit up, and I'm going to say in here, dot curlies, and I either want JPG or PNG or GIF, okay? We'll hit enter, and so that still works. So yeah, you can execute functions, you can do all sorts of stuff in here um, to make your life a little bit easier. But let's just take a look at some of the data structures because those are kind of important. I really don't like <laughs> data structures in Terraform because they're a bit of a headache to work with. There's reasons for it. So it's not that they're bad, it's just I don't like working with them. But I'm gonna go down here and paste this in so we can use this. And let's take a look at the data type. So if we go over here, it should be somewhere here. Um, let's say list Terraform. So that is one type. So yeah, the list function is no longer available. Prior to this, it was only available for this. So now it's updated to two lists, that's totally fine. Um, but there are different types of types. Let me just pull them up, okay? All right, so I had to pull up my notes because I just don't remember this stuff. Um, but uh, what we want to take a look here, and you can see there's a lot of stuff we're not exactly doing in this uh, bootcamp because we're focusing on the practical applications of what you'll actually use versus trying to cover every little thing, which is more for the certification. So I'm just I want to tell you, I got that certification course there. You might want to go take a look at it to round out anything we're missing here that's not practical, um, but gives you full knowledge, full, like 100% knowledge of Terraform. So the thing is, is that we have more complex types um, or structural types in here. So there is um, a list or a map, and, or you can think of it as a tuple or an object. And so basically if you have a list or a tuple, then it's going to look like an array and you have a map and an object and it's gonna look like a Python dictionary list, a JavaScript object, or um, a Ruby hash. So these are those more complex types. Um, and there are some restrictions in terms of how we can use them. So let me just go find that here. 
Here we go, I found the relevant slide. So a complex type is a type that groups multiple values into single values. Complex types are represented by type constructors, but several of them also have shorthand keyword versions. Okay, so there are two categories of complex types. We have collection types, list, map, and set. Then we have structural types, so tuple and object. The difference is these are similar values, and these ones are for grouping potentially dissimilar values. So that means that if you have a list, all the things in the list should be a string. Uh, if you have something here, it could be string number, whatever, whatever. That's how I read it. That's what my notes say. These are my notes, by the way. They're a course, but they're my notes. So let's just make my head a little bit smaller so we can take a look at some examples. So we have um, lists here. So a collection type allows multiple values of one other type that are grouped together as a single value. Um, so list is like an array. You can use an integer as the index to retrieve the value. So here we're defining um, a list, a variable with default values, and notice that we are accessing it as an array. We have maps over here on the right-hand side, um, very similar. So we set it, and then we can access it that way. We have sets, um, which are similar lists, but with no secondary index or preserved ordering. All values must have the same type and will be cast to match based on first element. Why do they have all these different kinds? I don't know. It probably made the language more proficient. Um, I'm sure someone at HashiCorp could tell me why, but you will find in practicality, that's what I care about is the practical component here is that you might come across certain types and a function accepts a very specific type and you have to cast it to another type. And that's what I was running into uh, over here when I was going down the rabbit hole. When I was doing this, I had this file set and I said, okay, I'm gonna, and this by the way is a mess, but I'll just open it up here and show you. So originally I was trying to use data and I was setting uh, local files here for asset files. And I said, okay, let's get a list of files. And this returned something. I can't remember what file set returned, but it returned one of those complex types. And it said element only likes lists. So I went, okay, I'm gonna cast that over to list. Um, and then when I ran into issues, it was down here and it wanted to cast it again. So all I'm trying to get at here is that in Terraform in practicality, you might have to cast things to other things, and these things are a pain to deal with, and you're not crazy. That's all I want you to know, okay? <laughs> if you want to learn all these different data types in greater detail, you can do so by uh, looking through this stuff, because I do it all, but I'm just gonna tell you, I don't remember most of it because it's not something I'm using day to day when I'm doing Terraform, okay? So hopefully that uh, helps make that point, even though that was a bit of a mess. Uh, but we'll get back to implementing this here, okay? All right, so what I wanna do here is I wanna do something similar um, to our S3 object, but we're gonna use a for each. Uh, and for each's can get really complicated, so we're gonna keep it really, really simple. <laughs> really, really, really simple. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna say resource and Adabus S3 object. Okay, then we're gonna say upload assets. And we're going to want to use our for each. And we have this file set. So we are going to say we want to iterate through our file set here. So this should be OK. This is hard coded. We'll probably change that for a, um, a Terraform variable. This uploads to a bucket. So we can go ahead and grab the usuals like this. OK. We probably also want the e tag. So we'll grab that as well. All right, and we probably want to ignore this stuff um, like this. Now, if we were changing the images, mm, replace triggered by, do we want to change it? Probably, we probably wanted to trigger on, the, on that like the other one, but so the question is now, how do we access this stuff in the for each? And so the way we can do that is that a for each, I believe returns a key and a value. Let's go take a look at that. So we'll type in for each Terraform. We'll go over here and we look at the basic syntax. So for each notice has a each key and then there's an each value. And it really depends on what you're using. So if you only have a um, that data structure, which is either, what did we say those were called? Um, Yeah, list, so if it's a list, yeah, I guess it's just list, list, or maybe a set, then we're gonna only have a key. 
Whereas if it's a more complex type, like a map, it will have a key and a value. So see, that is a map that we're looking at right there that's being uh, defined. But we know that this returns back an array. We saw that when we used Terraform console, okay? So what we'll do here is we'll go back over to here. Um, and I think what we need to do here is just do an each dot key. So um, here in the key, we want this to go to the assets directory. And then we want interpolation. And then we're going to do each key. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay, so that's step one. Um, the next part would be to do the source. Again, I'm just looking off screen to try to get my bearings here. But the source is going to be the location of where the file is. So that's going to be, hmm, do we use file set for that? No, we don't. The source is the local source file. Yeah, so we would need these, this, uh, this absolute path here. So we go path.root and we'd say public assets and then maybe each dot key. And this is the tricky part is the content type. Um, I think I just left it out because to calculate that dynamically might be a bit tricky. There's probably some way we could grab it, but it, I don't think it doesn't not serve assets. If this runs into an issue, we'll figure out how to set it. But for the time being, let's just skip that there. Um, the source and the e tag are the same path. So we'll go here and just take this out as such and do this, okay? So that should, for the most part, do what we want it to do. That looks good to me. Does it look good to you? <laughs> okay, down below here, we'll type in exit out of console. Sorry, I know we didn't do much more with console. It's just we don't really have many use cases unless we try to manufacture use cases for this. But, uh, you know, probably what we could have done is we could have made a map. So what we could have done is taken the file set and then split it on the extension, then mapped it to a content type, um, and then passed a map here and then had a key and value. Maybe we'll do that later. I just don't want to make things too hard on us, but it would give us an opportunity to do more complex um, uh, types. But again, I don't, I don't see that happening in practicality often. So that's why I'm not that interested to doing that. But anyway, let's go ahead and do Terraform plan and see what happens. I don't think we've uh, done a Terraform up on this new case here. What I'm interested in seeing is, is it going to upload those assets? So we'll go up here and upload assets. So it says will be created, upload asset. And it looks like it's creating them. So we have screenshot here. And the other one should be there. So we have asset screenshot. Here it is. So they look like they're both going to upload. So we are in good shape. Type in clear, Terraform, uh, we'll do TF. TF, apply, auto approve. And we'll let that go ahead and deploy. I'll see you back here in a bit, okay? When this is done deploying. All right, so um, yeah, our deploy is done there. Let's double check to make sure that our stuff that we're expecting is on the website. I guess if we can just see them on the website, then it's in good shape. Um, assuming the links are correct. Yeah, they're there. So it must be uploaded to the S3 bucket. That's all we really wanted to do here. Um, and I think that pretty much wraps up week one. I mean, we could play a, a little bit more around for Terraform console and those complex types, but you know, I think I'd rather leave that if there's stuff that if we have time in week two, we can push that into that week. Uh, we still have more work to be done. Um, getting the app built out is one thing, but getting infrastructure or the connection to Terra Towns is going to be the challenge for uh, week two, as we are going to be looking at a custom provider. So uh, that's really exciting, uh, at least uh, in my opinion, but we'll come back to our infrastructure. So yeah, we've finished this, 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 everything. Everything mostly is done, but we're getting into um, our custom provider next. And you know, if that goes really easily, then we will slot in more content. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that goes. Let's go ahead and finish this up with some documentation and some commit work here. So we'll go down below and we will take a look at for each. So for each expressions, for each expressions, Terraform. 
We'll go here and we'll copy this link here. I don't want to do that always first, but we'll go over here. Um, so it allows us to iterate over something. So yeah, you can use it for a lot of cases. Say for each allows us to iterate or numerate over um, complex data types, data types, data structures, whatever you want to say. Um, this is mostly useful when you are creating multiples of a cloud resource. and you want to reduce the amount of repetitive Terraform code. And yeah, there's more complex types. So like if we had a, let's say a virtual machine, we could have had a map for all the different types of configurations for the most part and iterate through them. There are limitations with for each uh, when mapping stuff. So it doesn't exactly work how you'd like. Oh, the other thing that we should do before we move on is the fact that uh, these are hard coded. We don't want that. So I think what we'll do is we'll make an assets path We'll go down below to our, um, where are we going here? Well, while we're waiting, let's just do Terraform destroy because this always takes forever. TF destroy, auto approve before we change any code here. So yeah, that will tear down, we'll let, that, let that go. Is it going? Great. And so what we'll do is we'll turn that over to uh, a variable. So instead of, doing this, which is fine, but it's just like, I don't want to hard code it. So we'll say var asset assets path. And we need to do that in our source as well. Again, I'm just looking off screen so I don't make any mistakes. Var assets path, that looks fine. Yep, we have to do the same thing down here. Say var assets path. Hopefully uh, this just works. We're just doing it blindly, so we're not testing it, which is probably a bad idea, but um, I just want to get it done. <laughs> so we have this one here, this one here, this one here. You're going to double check. It looks pretty good to me, so that's good. We need to go define this in um, over in our variables. So this one might be a little bit different. I'm going to just double check what I did for this. I'm sure I asked ChatGPT on that there. So we'll go down below, um, assets path. Yeah, I didn't do anything complicated. I just used a string. I think it might've been too hard to um, do any kind of fancy validation for that. So we're gonna keep it simple and follow what I did. Assets path. Okay, it's the description. Path to assets folder. And we'll just say type equals string. If you can do better, happy to see it. We'll go up to um, our variables here. The same thing here. We'll paste it in. And so that is now set up there. So that is good. So we have type string there in the variables and the other place. We need to also define it in our example. So I'm gonna put this back to one. And I'm gonna just say assets path. And it's just gonna be assets like that. Oops. So that is now in good shape. So we're good, we're just waiting for this to tear down. So we'll wait for this to tear down and then we'll be back, okay? All right, so that stuff is now teared down. So we're in good shape there. Let's do our documentation <laughs> and make sure we're in the correct branch, we are. So mine is 35, so I'm just gonna do 35 here. So that issue or this commit gets put in that issue as before. Um, so here we are uploading assets using a for each. Okay. And we'll go ahead and um, commit this. Great, we'll sync those changes. 
And um, now what we wanna do is go over here, do our pull request, make a new pull request. You know the routine, drop this on down. We're gonna look for our upload assets. Yep, there it is. We'll go ahead and create that pull request. We're going to create that pull request. We're going to squash and merge. And confirm squash and merge. Good. We're going to get checkout or get checkout main. Get pull. So we're gonna pull that stuff down. You know, every time we do the pull request, now I just think of MPC. You know, like those TikTok NBCs. And I'm I can't every time I say it, I just anyway, that's what's going on in my head. Let's go ahead and um Tag this. And this is gonna be version 1.80. So git tag 1.8.0, git push, git push, or sorry, git push tags. Oh, did we pull? We pulled, right? <laughs> we pulled, right? I'm so worried we didn't pull. We did, okay. Git push tags. Let's take a look at our commits, make sure that uh, our tags have been good. Double check your tags. Good, 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 good. Okay, so we're in good shape here. We are done. Um, I think we're done week one. Yeah, I think we're done. Week one. That was a lot. Um, but yeah, there's still more to learn. Um, it really is just gonna come down to next week if we're going to dig into past the provider. So we haven't hooked it up. What time do we have left? besides that provider to do um, and to get stuff connected. I don't know, but uh, we'll figure that out and we'll see you in class soon. Ciao.